Whoop Big dick. trust. Whoop whoop, whoop. Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is without a doubt going to be named the 2019 NFL MVP. He was the first player in NFL history to pass for over 3,000 yards and rush for over 1,000 yards in the same season. On top of a league-leading 36 touchdown passes, Jackson led the Ravens to an NFL best 14-2 record. Dating back to high school, Jackson's highest completion percentage and highest touchdown pass total came in the NFL this past year. Back in college, Jackson became Louisville's first ever Heisman winner in 2017. Just like 2019 Lamar Jackson, he tore up the field in numerous ways, accumulating 4,928 yards of total offense. With these successful seasons in both college and as a pro, Jackson will now join a very exclusive club of Heisman winners who went on to win NFL MVP. Let's take it back in reverse chronological order to every player on this coveted list. In 2015, during Cam Newton's MVP season, he had the chance to become the second player ever to win a Heisman, College Football National Championship, NFL MVP, and Super Bowl. He didn't end up winning that Super Bowl, but he still joins this list. Back in 2010, Newton took over the college football landscape at Auburn. And just to make things even more impressive, he was painting bleachers a year prior while playing at Blinn College. After flaming out at Florida, Newton looked to redeem himself at the junior college, where he learned some valuable discipline doing things like painting bleachers. Then once he made his way to Auburn as such a big body dual threat, he just blew things open. The Tigers went undefeated as Newton led the SEC in rushing while throwing for the most yards per attempt. He won the Heisman and a national championship. We gotta take it back to the 20th century for our next player. Barry Sanders was the last running back to accomplish this feat in 1988. But in the year prior, Sanders wasn't even the featured back in the Oklahoma State backfield. That honor went to the now Hall of Famer Thurman Thomas. So while Sanders was in the backup role, the rival Oklahoma coaching staff were preparing for how in the world they were going to stop Thomas. Then head coach Barry Switzer saw Sanders on film and he walked over to the coach's room and told them, you'd better hope Thurman Thomas doesn't get hurt. The next year in 1988, Sanders completed possibly the greatest individual college football season ever. He set the NCAA rushing record, scored 39 touchdowns, and averaged 7.6 yards per carry. After that season, the Lions would draft Sanders among an absolutely stacked top five picks. That green right there? That would mean Hall of Fame. Nine years after winning the Heisman, Sanders would become the third man to make his way into the NFL's exclusive 2K club. With 2,053 rushing yards, he would win NFL MVP. Although that season certainly stands out, he was also honored with six first-team All-Pro awards and a Pro Bowl nod in every single season he played. Marcus Allen became college football's first player to ever rush for over 2,000 yards in a regular season, but in high school he was actually a quarterback and safety. In 1978, USC quickly moved him to running back his freshman year. Although he played sparingly, the Trojans went on to win the national title. Three years later, Allen surpassed 200 yards in 8 out of 11 games. He won the Heisman and was then drafted by the Raiders. Just a few years later, he rushed for 191 yards in Super Bowl 18. The Raiders blew out the Redskins and Allen won Super Bowl MVP. In 1985, Allen added to his long list of accolades with an NFL MVP award. He then became the only player in history to win a college football national championship, the Heisman, the Super Bowl, Super Bowl MVP, and 
NFL MVP. After growing up in Texas, Earl Campbell led an undefeated Texas team to a national championship in 1977. The Longhorns ended up losing to a Joe Montana-led Notre Dame team, but Campbell was awarded the Heisman Trophy. Some people say he's the only person they've ever seen that could have skipped college and gone straight to the NFL. That's how big and how bruising he truly was. He grew up a linebacker and wanted to play just like Dick Butkus. As a pro, he got to stay in Texas even longer when the Oilers selected him with the first pick in the 1978 draft. Modeling himself after Jim Brown, Campbell was a first-team All-Pro selection in each of his first three seasons in the NFL. And in three years, he won the Heisman NFL Rookie of the Year and NFL MVP. Unfortunately for Campbell, the Steelers dynasty kept his Oilers from ever winning a championship. In his final year, he was traded to the Saints, but his production had slowed down quite a bit. His career only lasted eight years, but back when his legs were fresh, there might have been nobody harder to bring down than Earl Campbell. You know his story and how terrible of a human he is, but from a football perspective, O.J. Simpson goes down in history in both the college and pro game. Just like Marcus Allen, O.J. won a national championship and Heisman at USC. His Heisman voting margin of victory stood for over 50 years. In 1969, he was selected in the AFL-NFL draft by the Bills, and he actually didn't eclipse 1,000 rushing yards until his fourth year in the league. Then in his fifth year, he became the first player to ever break 2,000 rushing yards in a season. And with that stat, it's always important to point out how OJ is the only one to ever do it in 14 games. So with having the best rushing season of all time, he was awarded MVP. So the thing with Roger Staubach is he won the Burt Bell Player of the Year award in 1971. And I've seen him on a couple Heisman NFL MVP lists, but Alan Page was actually the AP NFL MVP that same year. And by then the AP award had been given out for a decade. And I feel like it's most logical to go by the AP award and then look at the other awards before 1961 when the AP NFL MVP award wasn't even a thing yet. So in this list, I'm not going to include Staubach, and I'm not really sure why these other lists included him. Although he is one of the best quarterbacks ever, but here on Chase Chats, I don't want these Vikings fans up my- <laughs> Now we're back in the pre-Super Bowl era, and what better player to go to than Paul Horning? who Vince Lombardi once called the most versatile man who ever played the game. As one of the greatest players in Notre Dame history, Horning didn't always have the best talent around him. His team went 2-8 in 1956, which makes him the only Heisman winner on a losing team. As a senior, he rushed for 420 yards and passed for 917 yards, which ranked him second in the country in total yards. He also threw for three touchdowns and Get this, 13 interceptions. All I can say is, it was certainly a different game back then. And besides all that, he didn't finish with the most first place Heisman votes either. But he was doing a lot for that team. He also returned kickoffs, kicked extra points, and played safety. He was the first overall pick in the 1957 draft to... The Green Bay Packers. And as a Packer, he's listed as a halfback fullback, quarterback, and kicker. And he would go on to become one of the most important players of that Green Bay dynasty. In 1960, he tallied 176 points in a season, a record which stood until 2006. And in 1961, he won MVP and guided the Packers to an NFL championship.
And finally, our last one. In 1942, Frank Sinkovic became Georgia's first Heisman winner. Having been born in Croatia, he was also the first Heisman to be born outside the U.S. His most notable game with the Bulldogs probably came in the Orange Bowl his junior year. While playing with a broken jaw, he totaled 382 yards. The Lions picked him with the first pick in the 1943 draft. He only played pro football for four seasons, but it only took two for him to win NFL MVP. After his playing career, he served in the military, coached football, and owned a beer and wine distribution business. Surprisingly enough, every one of these players never won MVP again. Obviously, Newton and Jackson are still active. It'll be interesting to see if Jackson or anyone else can break that streak or if he can join Marcus Allen and win a Super Bowl slash Super Bowl MVP. Let me know what you guys think and please remember to like the video and sub it up. Lamar Jackson is an RB, and by RB, I mean a real to defend.